Hi folks, it's Stratman here from pitwear.com. Um, still going through the, the basics of the strategy that I, I'm using. I'm trying to teach that uh, one part at a time. Uh, one thing that's become quite apparent to me is that that people really need to have a bit of a, a, a shift in the way they think about learning Forex. Um, and the best way I can kind of illustrate this is, is uh, let's say when I was at school, um, we had to learn lots of different formulas for things and learn how to punch numbers in for each of the values in a formula. Now, there are two types of people at school. One type would be those people that kind of learn that, uh, let's say, F equals MA. Uh, which force equals mass times acceleration. Now, if you know that formula, you can punch the numbers in, fine. But if you don't really know what mass is and what acceleration is and what force is, then, and you don't think in terms of, well, if I increase the mass, then the force is going to be higher. If you don't think in those terms, and, and then you actually you struggle with with science in general. So I always took the idea that to learn a little bit about the principles behind what made up the formula. So with that said, what I'm going to try and do here is show you that it's not really about the moving averages as such, as in which ones, what period, whether it's an EMA, SMA or whatever. That is really irrelevant. What you what you need to know is the actual principle behind using those moving averages. So I'm going to illustrate that now um, by just using two different sets of moving averages and we'll see that we, we end up with exactly the same result. So first of all, let's let's put a moving average on. Um, all right, so we'll insert a moving average and we're going to put on a, uh, a 60 period SMA on our um, M15 time frame. Okay, simple moving average. There it is. Now we're going to grab a second moving average and we're going to take the 60 SMA from the H1 time frame. Now to get, we're on the M15, so to get the equivalent of an H1 SMA 60, we we need to have, um, we need to multiply it by 4 because 15 minutes goes into 1 hour 4 times. So 60 times 4 is 240. And I'll just change the color. Now, so we've got two moving averages. They're both 60 period moving averages from two different time frames. Now, the pink one is what I, uh, the purple one is the one that I would call the faster one. So that's the one from the M15. Now, the rule, here's the principle. Regardless of what type of moving averages these are, this is the rule. The rule is to find a point where the moving averages have crossed over. We don't necessarily want to trade just as they've crossed over. What we're after is to get the very best entry with that crossover. So whether these are crossed over or not, the whole point is that because the pink or the purple one is below the blue one, or the fast is below the slow, I'm only looking for short trades. And I will only enter a trade when we have a pullback into the moving averages. And then we break out away from that. So the easiest way to do that kind of thing is to draw a trend line as price is retracing back into the moving average. When it finally busts out of that trend line, because we're only looking for shorts here because of what I said before, we can see that um, if we had a pending order, and we'd establish this trend line, and we just move this pending order up this line and keep on moving it up until we get finally till it gets caught, then we enter a trade short and very successful trade. In this case, that trade is, is quite a significant trade of about 80 pips. Now, the same thing can apply all the way down this, this trend line, uh, uh, trend line moving average. A trend line going this way into the moving average. So I could do another one here. I could do, it doesn't necessarily have to go all the way back into the moving average. What we're after is the fact that price is retracing back towards the moving average 
and then breaks away in the direction of the moving average. So, I mean, we're using 60 period moving averages here. Not a problem. Nice one this morning. Um, I was in the Skype room this morning talking to the guys in there and we caught this one. Yeah, just a lovely little breakaway here. It was a nice little, um, I only took 10 pips off this trade uh, because I was hoping it might go a bit further and I locked in 10 pips. But look, you could have made about 30 pips there. Right, let's just clean the slate. And we'll now change these moving averages to something else and see how this affects us. So the first moving average, which is the faster moving average, let's change it to a 25 period uh, EMA. Okay, so exponential moving average 25. The one for the um, H1 would have to be four times that, so uh, we'll make that 100. And it's a exponential moving average. And We've got the same kind of idea that the moving average is just being used to show us whether we're trading short or long. That's really the essence of it. This is the principle. It's not what the moving average is. It's the principle. The principle is whenever we get a retracement back into our moving averages and we've established that we're going only looking for short trades, we're looking for retracements under there, there's a trade opportunity. Here's another trade opportunity. It's the same, it's exactly the same. It doesn't matter. Here's another one. Here's another one down here. So you can see there are all these short trading opportunities away from the moving average. We didn't have to wait for it to come back and touch the moving average. All we're interested in is that we're getting a pull back towards the moving average. It's running along a little trend line. And then as soon as it busts that trend line, we're into the trade. What about stops? Let's have a bit of a look at what the stops would be. Well, I'm, I'm just going to move, now that we know that that's happened, let's, let's just get rid of one of the moving averages, um, the longer one, for a start. I'm just going to... Actually, we'll get rid of the short one. I'm going to go down to the M5. And I'm going to make this equivalent to the uh, the 60 period on the M15. So, so to do that, it's um, five times. It's three times slower. So uh, that would be something like a 10 or an eight eight period moving average, maybe. Uh, actually, that's not true. It's times three, so it'll be a 75 period moving average. Okay. So you can still see what's going on here, that we're, we're trading short on all of these things. I've just left that moving average there so you can see what you're doing. But let's just have a look at what the stops would have been. For me, the stop is always on the top of the previous closed candle on M5 for a start. So if we go back to our first trading opportunity, which is this one here by the looks, let's have a look. Stop would have been here, so when we, we would have entered the trade when it broke this point. So the stop itself would have only been 11 pips, but price didn't even retrace, even if we take the low to the high of there, 5 pips. Go and have a look at the next one. I mean the stop, the close of the previous candle is this one. So uh, we're talking about 6 pips. Um, I would have had... It's either the top of that or 10 pips, but the retracement again, hardly anything. Um, you know, five pips. What's this one? We break here, there's the top of the previous candle, but the retracement look, I doubt whether there was even any retracement, but the stop less than 10 pips. But this one here, um, break here, stop would have been there for a start. Up there, that's about 20 pips, but look, it only retraced 7 pips. So for me, I would have had a 10 pip stop, um, but it only retraced 7 and we're into a good trade. Next one down here. This one here, the stop would have been up here. Entry would have been there. We would have been moving a penny order along here. Finally, it got triggered um, and we would have had a stop of 
just under 10 pips, but retracement wise, it didn't retrace on us much, maybe three pips. So these, these are all high probability trades. 